This is Alfred, who has all kinds of skin problems and allergies, uh, but he also has a little bit of reactivity towards dogs on a leash. I'm thinking it's leash aggression, but I'm going to show uh, you how to teach your dog to focus on command, because this is a great way to redirect your dog's attention away from another dog. So when you do this, I like to have about 12 treats in my hand. If you want a high value training treat, I'm using his kibble because he has some skin allergies, but normally I like using a very high training treat that has a good smell. I'm gonna make two fists with my hands and I'm gonna put them on my knees. Now I'll show you right now to begin with. This knee has no wet spot, it will have a wet spot in it. So I'm gonna lure him in position. I want him to be sitting in front of me. I want my knees shoulder width apart and I'm gonna put my hands with the treats down on my knees. Now he's gonna go straight to the source. He's gonna lick and molest my hand to try to get this treat. I'm holding it between my thumb and forefinger and pushing it against my knee to kind of anchor it in so he won't be able to get it. He can only taste a tiny little bit of it. I'm watching his eyes intently. The only way that he can get this thing is by looking at me in the face. Doesn't have to be eye contact, just face contact. I'm not telling him to do it. I've been talking the whole time. We've been about an hour or so into the session. I'm just waiting for him to look at me in the face. And it can be just an eye dart. So when you're doing this, watch him like a hawk, especially at first. After a while, he'll stare at you like a stalker. But right now, he's just trying to take it, essentially, as a dog might. Now, he's not biting me. He's biting a little bit, but he's not biting fairly gently. So as soon as he looks at me, focus. I raise my nose to make him look at my face, and then I go to straight to his mouth. Now, focus. That's really good. I did practice a little bit off camera. Focus. Now, if a dog voluntarily looks you in the eyes, focus. For longer than seven seconds, it starts releasing oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine, focus, into your brain. It also releases in the dog's brain. Now, when dogs are stressed, focus. It's releasing cortisol, the stress hormone, into the dog's blood, which makes it a physical focus manifestation as well as a psychological one. If your body is producing focus, oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine, it stops the production of cortisol. So if you have a dog that gets stressed around or other dogs or other situation, and you can find a way to stop the production of stress, the stress hormone, in this case, cortisol, this exercise can actually stop your dog from being stressed out. So what I want to do is at first it's one second for each movement. I'll show you. I just one, one, focus. Don't hold it at your nose, just transition. And if you watch, my hand is going to be, my palm is going to be facing him the whole time. A lot of people turn their hand up at the last minute. I'll show you the bad technique. See how he's looking down at my crotch? Mm -hmm. I want him looking at my face the whole time. But I'm not telling him or luring him to do it. I'm waiting for him to do it on his own, and then I'm rewarding him for doing so. So eventually, you're going to do it like this. Focus. And you saw he lurched there at the minute because I went from one second to 15. The way you want to practice this, I usually have 12 treats in my hand, and I reload after each one so he knows we're still playing it. Focus. And there's the wet spot I talked mm -hmm. about. So basically, at first he was molesting my hand. Now he's not even doing it. He's looking at me yeah. almost instantly. So now I want to start. Uh, once the next time I do it, all twelve treats, I would go one second, two seconds. Focus for the second movement only. And then the next time I might do three seconds. And if you go to, for, from three to four, and at three and a half he starts looking away, back up and practice again at three. The idea is to get to the point where he will stare at you in the face for fifteen seconds in the house when there's no distractions. Nobody's okay. eating, nobody's opening bags of chips or any of that stuff. The next step, we have a little bit of a depth here. We're in Mar Vista. And so I would go practice out there or where an apartment complex outside of your door. Okay. Not outside where there's distractions, but outside of your place. It's a little more challenging. Now at this point, because it's a new environment, I go back to one second, one second. And that's kind of what he'll do. Focus. But I might do this for four treats, and then he kicks back, oh, we're doing this exercise. Then I might go uh, one second, two seconds for four treats, and then one second, three seconds for four treats. You move faster. They will get bored of this, so you want to be within seven days, if not sooner, this is pretty easy, in your apartment. Then when you're outside, you want to get to within one or two days to the back to the 15 second mark. Okay. And also when you're practicing this, practice in different locations. Dogs don't generalize well, they have to practice things in different locations or retain the information. Uh, so once I get to the point where he can do it outside consistently for 15 seconds, then I would do it on walks. Now when you do it on walks, it's a little bit different because you're not going to wait for him to look at you. At this point, he understands the cue, he should. So when you're walking and he's next to you on your right side or left, whichever side, and there's nobody around, no dogs, there's no reason for him to be reactivity, 
be reactive. You, while you're walking, you say focus. He looks at you and raise your nose and you go focus. As you walk, don't stop. And what, after a while, you get to the point where you, and again, you're gonna go back to one second, one second, but within a couple days, you wanna be at a point where you can say 15 seconds lowering the treat while you're walking. Okay. So this way, when we're walking down the street, if we see another dog and he's like, I don't like the look of that dog, and I've done everything else right, I can actually say focus, and the dog's there, and as I'm going like this, the dog's looking at me, he's not looking here. And as the person, this is the person walking by, and by the time I give the treat, focus, and he's like, all right, I'm gonna yell at that jerk, oh, they're behind us. So we redirect him and help him practice not reacting as people go by. Mm -hmm. Now, for dogs that are uh, uh, real, real uh, I think he has leash aggression. Oh, man, that's nice slobber. Yes. Yeah. Dogs have a built-in towel. That's a great thing about dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, so dogs that are reacting to the sight of dogs, what we do is the same technique, but what we do is we look for a place where it's a triangular-shaped vision of movement. Let's say there's a trail in front of me, and I can see in this angle. I can see here, but over here there's trees that block my view, and over here there's trees that block my view. So when, I, the dogs walk, when I'm sitting here, I find enough distance where my dog will sit and take the tree. If it won't sit or won't take the treat, it's too close to the other to the stimulus. So once I can get my plate as close as I can where the dog will sit and take a treat, as people are walking by with their dogs, then my dog, I, I see somebody about to climb through the clearing, and I say the word focus, I wait until they come to the clearing. And I give them about one or two seconds. And if the dog doesn't look at me on his own, then I say focus, he looks up at me, and I give him the treat. And, and I'm, because I'm doing it slowly, by the time I give him the treat, the dog passes. And then what happens, yes, um, is um, after I do this enough, the dog will get programmed to this. So the dog will see the other dog and look up at me automatically, and it's alerting itself and luring itself away from the other dog. Because when I see a dog and I look at my human, a treat's coming here. So if you do, if you have, and I, got, I don't think this is your dog's problem, but I have people that watch my videos all sorts of problems, so I figured I'd throw it in there. So if you do have a dog that's reacting to the sight of other dogs, and you can do this, eventually your dog will learn itself to turn away from the other dog. When a dog is acting aggressive towards a dog, if the camera's another dog, and I don't like the dog, I'm gonna act aggressive to try to make the other dog move away. Dogs are very front facing. Right. Well, there's another option for that. I can turn around away. But I can't do that if I'm focused on the dog. So if you can say focus, the dog looks up at you and they turn and walk away. And at first you're leading the dog away. But after a while the dog starts to figure this out. I don't like the look of that dog, I'm gonna turn and walk this way, and my human will listen to me. Most of the time when we're on walks, front facing is confrontational for dogs, as I mentioned off camera, and we walk our dogs down sidewalks, and there's another dog walking towards us, and you're thinking, we're just gonna pass that dog, and your dog's like, you're leading me right into a fight. And you're not, and I, so I slow down, I'm pulling, and you don't listen to me, so now I have to handle the situation myself. And you're doing a great job of focusing. The focus can work against you or it can work for you. In this case, you're teaching your dog to look at you and to focus on you so you can get it out of trouble. Right. Now, when you're doing this, the last thing you also want to do is you also want to practice a plan B. Because sometimes a dog comes around the corner out of a building, boom, right there, and you don't have a chance to actually uh, pull out the treat and do the focus. So what you want to do when you're walking down the street, you want to teach your dog a turn. So if the dog's on my right side, and I'll, I haven't shown this for a while, but I'm just realizing, can you see my feet? Mm -hmm. So as I'm walking, uh, if the dog, and he's here for now, but um, here, I'm going to give you out of the way. Look at that so as I'm walking, I want to practice a U-turn. So what I'm going to do as I'm walking, I take this step, the second step goes to a T, and I, and I pull out a treat. So I'm going like this, I'm going to go step, show the dog that I have the treat, step here, the dog starts to turn, take another step here, it turns, and when I'm now going 180, I give the dog the treat and I say the word turn. Now you want to practice this, when you're walking down the street and there's no other dogs, do a turn, do one turn, then walk about four paces the other direction and do it. So you're basically doing an oval. Mm -hmm. And that way you're practicing turns when there's no other dogs around. If you only do it when other dogs around, when other dogs around you turn, it's like, oh, there's something, some reason. So he's like, my human's weird now. Black shirt guy came and now we suddenly just do donuts mm -hmm. for no reason. Well, now if you do see that other dog, you'd say turn, the dog turns, and you can get him out of trouble quickly. So it's a backup. But the main thing is, again, to help him uh, focus on you and get him out of trouble. Uh, Alfred! Alfred! This is how I get a dog to come, and this is how I get a dog to sit, and that's how I get a dog to stop jumping. Come! This is Alfred, and this is how you can teach your dog to focus.